Okay, so the first thing we need to recognize is that the square root of 8, negative square root of 8 times uh, negative square root of 40, these are two numbers. This is a number, okay? Don't let the square root part uh, kind of bother you here for a second. This is a negative number, all right? And we're multiplying it by a negative number. So a negative number times a negative number is what? Hopefully you answered positive, right? So just kind of stand back for a second and let's just deal with these negative um, signs right now. A negative times a negative is positive. So we know our answer is going to be positive. So we could just kind of disregard the negative signs at this point in the problem and just think of the problem as the square root of 8 times the square root of 40. All right, now the next thing we need to do is we need to look at each individual uh, numbers underneath these square roots and we need to uh, examine the factors of these numbers all right now what is a factor of a number well here is eight the factors of eight are four and two and one and eight all right so the, these numbers when you multiply them together we get back to that number so we call these numbers factors so we're looking for very specific factors okay now sometimes numbers have these factors sometimes uh, they do not okay all depends of course on the number now what factors am I talking about well I'm talking about perfect squared uh, factors all right and here are the numbers we're looking for okay as factors of a number so uh, four okay is one nine uh, 16, 25. Now, look at the pattern here, okay? Uh, why would I be interested in, in these numbers? Well, because when I take the square root of these uh, respective numbers, I get these beautiful little uh, whole numbers, right? Like the square root of 4 is 2, square root of uh, 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5, and on and on and on. So when we're looking at factors of these respective numbers, we're asking ourselves, Hey, do uh, these numbers have any perfect square factors? Because if they do, we want to rewrite these um, uh, values as uh, products of um, a perfect square factor and whatever else, right? So let's take a look at 8 here. So 8, I can write as 4 times 2. Okay, I'm like, oh, wow, that's great because 4 is a perfect square factor. And 40, I can uh, write as 4 times 10. Again, 4 is a perfect square factor. Now what you want to do is use the biggest perfect square factor when you recognize it. Now if there if you can't remember or if you just don't recognize you know the a bigger perfect square factor that actually you know is a factor of that number, don't worry about it just you know just start simplifying little by little but you'll see here in a second what I'm talking about. All right, so here we have the square root of 8. That's equal to the square root of 4 times 2, okay? And the square root of 40 is equal to the square root of 4 times 10. Now, at this uh, next step, this is something incredibly valuable uh, that we can do in algebra, okay? So here I have the one big square root over these factors. What you're allowed to do in algebra is break up these factors and uh, with their own individual square roots, okay? So you can see here, instead of one big square root over 4 times 2, I can actually write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Now, why is that important? Because right here, the square root of 4, I know, is 2. This is how we simplify this number. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Square root of 4 is 2. So 2, okay, square root of 4 again is 2. 2 times the square root of 2 is obviously 2 square root of 2. But we're multiplying it, this by the square root of 40, which is the same thing as square root of uh, 4 times 10. Again, we're going to break up this big square root into two small square roots. And here I have my lovely perfect square factor. Square root of 4 is 2. So this is going to be 2 square root of 10. All right, now at this point, we're like, okay, we got some momentum. And we're like, what do we do now? Well, we're not done. Okay. We're, we're well on our way. So now we need to multiply these two uh, uh, square roots. So what we do is we multiply the outside numbers. Two times two, of course, is four. And then the square root of two times the square root of 10 is we're kind of doing the reverse of breaking up uh, one big, um, uh, we're kind of basically going this way, right? When you have two individual square roots, we can also rewrite that as one big square root, and that's what we're doing here. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 10 is going to be the square root of 20. 
All right, so hopefully this makes sense to you. And if you're like, yep, I got this. Now, if you are struggling at this point, let me give you a couple of quick suggestions. One, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel on square roots and radicals. Uh, but I would strongly suggest you probably check out like my Algebra 1 course if you want full, complete instruction on this. All right, so if some of you got this as your answer, I would definitely give you a nice little happy face. But you're not done. OK, and you're saying, what are you talking about? I'm not done. You know, this looks right. You know, I did everything you told me to do. Well, not so quick, because when we simplify this, we have this square root of 20. We always have to ask ourselves, hey, are there any more perfect square factors uh, that we, we can take out? And sometimes you, they don't show up until, you know, we you know, we're in the middle of the problem. Then now you have a new situation where you have to kind of like see if you can simplify your answer. And that's very, very common in algebra. But in here, indeed, we do have another perfect square factor. So here is our situation, 4 square root of 20. So obviously that's 4 square root of 20. Again, we can write as uh, the square root of 4 times 5, right? That is, of course, 20. And we're looking for those perfect square factors. And we have one there, 4, OK? So now we're going to go ahead and break up these individual square roots. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, again, a square root of 4, that uh, uh, is a nice, beautiful, perfect square factor. That's going to be 2, right? So now we have 4 times 2, which is 8 times the square root of 5. And this is the fully simplified answer. So stuff that you absolutely need to know uh, in algebra, learning how to work with uh, square roots and radicals and, and whatnot. Um, there's going to be plenty of times uh, when you are taking a test or exam uh, in any math course that you're not going to be allowed to use your calculator. So if you thought, hey, I could just get my calculator out and, you know, create some decimals here and, you know, just kind of do all that. Well, yes, sometimes you need to do that, but that's not what we're talking about here. OK, and this is a basic algebra skill. So, again, if you need additional help with this, make sure you get it because you will definitely see this if you continue to learn mathematics at this level. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.